Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. <laughs> I just watched the live just now. I was like, I was like he got alive, bro. I miss Marty, man. Yeah, I miss my man. Miss my man. Let's open up to uh, uh, John chapter uh, 7, verse 14. This is John chapter 7, verse 14. I have to make this thing quick. I ain't got nothing to darn drink. It's John chapter 7, verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. Mm -hmm. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? He said, How does he know letters? And he never even learned them. Right? How does he know the scripture and he's never learned it? Let's hear about it. Yahushua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Mm -hmm. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Mm -hmm. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeks his glory that sent him, he that seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. All right, so we've been listening to a whole lot of people that speak of themselves. All right? Sure, they come up to it and they, talk, they act like they're talking about Jesus. Right, but at the end of the day, it's about their church fund and how many people that they, how many members can they tout to their friends that they have in their church. Right? At the end of the day, it just comes down to some, some legacy or some denomination. Right? How successful the denomination is. Right? It's time for us to look at it and say, okay, well, who's speaking from the Most High God perspective? And the person who do what the Most High God say, you will know very clearly if you're doing what the Most High God say or not, just because you're doing what the Most High God say. Right? You will know very clearly if somebody's speaking to you some doctrine that goes along with what God say because you're going along with what God say. Right? It's that simple. It's just a matter of doing what we know to do when we know to do it. That book. Where, where is that at? James? What? If a man know to do good and do it not, yeah, yeah. it's sin on him? Yeah, it's a sin on what is that? That ain't James. James, is it? That's Paul who said that, ain't it? No, that's James. That's James? But a man that knows to do good but does not is sin on him. That's James. Right? We look at that, you know what I'm saying? That's what he's trying to do. Once you know it, once the word hits you and you know it, just do it. I don't care how simple it is. Go with it. Right? Because now you can look at the word, and now when something else comes along, now you can identify. You can say, okay, that don't line up with what I already know. Right? And the most I got to build you from there. He'll keep adding on to you. Right? And make you out to be something. That's what we all look for. Where we leave off last week? Oh, yeah, we were talking uh, Deuteronomy 8, right? Yeah, we went all the way to Deuteronomy 8. We were talking about how, how the, the Israelites, you know what I'm saying? We were talking about, you know, this is our legacy, our law, kind of taking us back through some of the things that we went through. We finished that chapter. Chapter 8, right? Took us back through some of the things that we went through. All right, the most high guy, he, he tried to let us know. It's like, man, I didn't do this because, because of y'all. Like, I, I ain't bringing y'all into the land because y'all so tight. Y'all were doing all the right stuff. That y'all deserve it. Right? He said, I'm bringing y'all into the land because I made a deal with y'all pops. That's the only reason y'all get in. We talked about this a little bit last week. You know what I'm saying? I brought you in just because, I mean, you y'all had parents that I messed with. They obeyed me. Therefore, I'm keeping my deal. But if y'all mess up just like the people I'm kicking out of this land and putting y'all in the land, I'll remove y'all butts out of the land and put y'all put somebody else in the land. 
And that's exactly what happened. That's how we end up here. All right? We end up being scattered and ran off from Israel, put into Africa and other places in the world, and then they come over, make deals, and then take us captive, bring us over to America, and bring us over to South America, Cuba, right? Brazil, all these different places, all in the Caribbean, right? They do all these things to us and put all our people over there and spread us out because that's prophecy, that's book. The Most High God said this is what will happen to you if you don't obey, right? Have we got it based on the merit of our own righteousness, right? Then, you know what I'm saying, then Most High God, his hands is tied, like, all right, well, you earned it, you got to stay there. But since we didn't get it off our own, the most I got look at that be like, well, I'll take that away from you quick. You never earned it in the first place. Right? That's what's important. It's no different from right now. We look at it, we look at it, that's the Christians claim to fame. Right? They tell us, you know what? It's not about obedience. It's not about do anything that you do. You know why? Because this is something that God does, not for your righteousness. And that's a book. But you know what? The obedience part ain't book. Grab a uh, grab Second Timothy for me. The Second Timothy chapter one, give me verse seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, uh -huh. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh -huh. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, mm -hmm. nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. That's Second Timothy chapter 1, yeah. verse 7. Yep. Mm, keep going. 219. 219, what that say? Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. Now you can read that from me today, what I'm looking for. Oh. Nevertheless, what is it? This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. So this is the seal, right? A seal is like a stamp of approval. It's how you know that thing authentic. Something got a seal on it? That's it. You try to, you try to go get a business license or something like that, your license don't have a seal on it? They ain't accepting that thing. That thing ain't even authentic, right? So a seal is trying to, trying to prove that this is something that's authentic. It's approved, right? So he said... The foundation of God, to be founded in God, to be have a foundation that is from God, to be standing on God, it is sure because it has this seal. What seal, Paul? The Lord knows them that are his. He knows them that are his. So in other words, you ain't getting nowhere if the most high God don't know you, right? And what's the second one? And let everyone that names the name of the Messiah depart from iniquity. It's a seal. Let me tell you something. It's part of the seal. The Most High God know if you sinning or not. He know if you his or not. Oh, and the second part of that seal, let everybody who name his name, everybody who, Jesus, oh, I love me some G. I I just want to praise God. All that stuff these people be doing, that's real nice. I appreciate it. But he said, if you name his name, no, let him depart from iniquity. I forgot all about that thing. We used to touch that thing all the time, didn't we? I like that. Right? He said, let them all depart from iniquity. That's a seal. So at the same time, we look at it. Uh, I don't know what I want. Maybe 1 Timothy chapter 2, maybe. What does it, what does it say? Uh, not by your own righteousness or, you know what I'm saying, not by, you know what I'm saying. Uh, one of the ones these, these Christian love going to. Christian just hit me off with this one. That's how I, that's how I try to remember it. First Timothy two, you talking about the wives and how to be? Yeah, paid. no, I definitely ain't First Timothy two. So I don't know. Maybe we should keep reading in First Timothy. Let me see. Give me Second Timothy one verse ten. But is now made manifested by the appearing appearing. Give me of verse Christ nine. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. No, okay, that is what I want. To his own All right, so go go ahead and start me off at seven. Let's just read down. I didn't For God has not given us the power, of the the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh huh. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner. Uh huh. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Uh huh. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. But he said, according, not according to what? 
Not according to our works, uh -huh. but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in the Messiah, Yahushua, before the world began. All right? So we look at this and we see this thing that we have with the Messiah, we're given grace. Right? We're given grace. And so with it being given grace, it's not by our works. That's where the Christians get the idea from. They're like, we're saved, but not by our works. Right? Grab, uh, grab, grab John chapter 1, verse, uh, grab John chapter 1, verse 11. It's John chapter 1, verse 11. So I give me give me 14. Should say when when the word became flesh. 11 is too hard. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing to drink. We're gonna try to wrap this thing up. What's that? What he that? came unto his own, and his own received him not. Uh-huh. But as his, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, mm -hmm. which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Mm -hmm. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, uh -huh. full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spake. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth. Uh oh. So the what was given by Moses? The law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. Why would the Bible do though? But grace and truth came by Yahushua the Messiah. So if you're a Christian and you're reading this, the only conclusion you can come up with the law was given by Moses, but grace was given by Yahushua. So guess what wasn't in the law? Grace. That's the conclusion. If you're a Christian, that's the only conclusion you can come. See, the law didn't have no grace. Yeah, only right. Yahushua brought grace. But we look at it and we see the same lane. We read in the law, right? We read the law last, last week. And we read it and it told us very clearly, I'm not doing this for you. I'm not doing this because of y'all. I'm doing it because I'm getting rid of these other purposes. What does that sound like? That sounds like God's purpose. That's what he just told you. He said, by God's own purpose, not because of what something we did, for God's own purpose. That's what he just told us out in Timothy. Right? So we see the same game plan all the way through. It's just that now we're looking at something different. Right? We're looking at something different. It's not different in the sense that God didn't have mercy or didn't have, didn't have uh, grace in the law. It's just different in terms of the person who is giving the law and the instructions at this point. Right? Because that would be like saying Yahushua didn't have law. Well, he did. He brought instructions. Very clearly. Even Paul talked about it. He said the law unto Christ. Right? Law unto the Messiah. Let's pick up. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9. Watch this. This is Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 1. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day, mm -hmm. to go and to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven, mm -hmm. a people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, who thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard, say, who can stand before the children of Anak. Yeah, remember them, them big boys. We talked about that a little bit earlier, a couple weeks ago. That was them big boys. You know what I'm saying? Them boys are giants. Yeah, they're the descendant of the giants. And we talked a little bit about that. Y'all got to go back and watch the old video. But you know what I'm saying? He's talking about, you know what I'm saying? Them boys are giant. We, we didn't think we could take them. A lot of our people didn't think we could take them. Say for uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb. They're the only one that was like, oh, guy already gave this to us. We good. A lot of the other ones, they're looking like, man, I don't know about this. These boys are big. We like grasshoppers to them. Right? Keep going. Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goes over before thee. As a consuming fire he shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face. Uh -huh. So shalt thou drive them out, and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said unto thee. Uh -huh. Speak not thou in thine heart after that the Lord thy God has cast them out from before thee, saying, 
for my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. Right? He said, don't you mess around and speak that for my righteousness, the Lord has brought me into this land. He said, that's crazy. He said, don't get to running your mouth talking about, oh, yeah, he brought me in because I'm so righteous. That sounds like New Testament if you ask these people. So you see the grace and the mercy was always there. Most like God always had grace and mercy. All right, keep going. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord does drive them out from before thee. Mm -hmm. Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of your heart mm -hmm. does thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As you can see, it's for his purpose. All right? He made it very clear to him that it's for his purpose. All right? Grab Ephesians chapter 2 for me. See the water she gave me? That's disgusting. You let one of these kids drink out of it? That's disgusting. That's disgusting. You gotta lie. You gotta be ashamed of your darn self. That's disgusting. I definitely don't drink after Eli. Got darn nasty kid. Every day to what? She said What we got? Ephesians chapter 2, verse what? There's Ephesians chapter 2. Give me like verse 8. Give me verse 7. Give me verse 6. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Give me 5. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, he has quickeneth us, quickeneth us together with the Messiah. By grace ye are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahushua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Yahushua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. For by grace are ye saved through faith. By grace you're saved. Through what? Faith. Uh huh. And that not of yourselves. And that not of your, not of yourselves, but it's a what? It is the gift of God. That thing is a gift of the Most High God. Is that not what He telling us in Deuteronomy? He telling them, "I'm bring you up in here. This thing's a gift. I did this for your pops, right? I'm gonna bring you on up in here. But guess what? Don't you get over there and think you know what I'm saying? Thinking you could just do whatever you want to do. Otherwise, I'll kick your butt out, right? Let's see what Ephesians tell us. Not of worse, lest any man should boast. Uh-huh, but what? For we are his workmanship. He said, not of works, lest anyone should boast. But guess what we are? We are his the... workmanship. And what else? And what are we created for? Created in Yahushua the Messiah. For what? Unto good works. So that we can have good works. What do you think going to happen if we were cre created for good works, and then we end up doing bad works? What do you think? How do you think it worked when you create something? I mean, let's just, I mean, let's just say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would, me, and, me and my brother, we were talking about making a, a, you know what I'm saying, a little shelf, right? So let's just say we put it, you know what I'm saying, we got together, we started to, you know what I'm saying, DIY, you know what I'm saying, looking it up on YouTube, figuring out, chopping some stuff up. We did it, and then we tried to put the TV on top of that thing, and it just fell apart. What are we going to do? Be like, ah, now that's a quality piece of work. We spent a lot of time on it, so let's just keep it just like that. You know how quickly that thing gonna go in the trash? So what? You, what make us think God is any different? Most of our God put us in the position. He said, "You know what? I created you for good works, right? I created you for good work. Then we just keep sinning, keep lying, keep stealing, keep cheating. The Most High God gonna put us in position to, and just stay there? No. That's where grace come in. He gonna sit there, he's there. The clock ticking. 
man ain't gonna be sitting there telling you clock darn ticking. You might wanna you might wanna make a darn move. That move don't get made, your butt going in the trap. I mean, when we when we put that shelf together, we might as well. I mean, we might that thing break a little bit. We might. All right, let me put another nail right here. You know what I'm saying? We might try to keep it together because it's like you know what I'm saying. I did just spend all this money on this, so I might try to keep it together for a little bit. But after a couple times, that thing ain't working. That thing going in the trap. That's how I got it. Got to got to got to take some time. Right here, take some time. Try to you know what I'm saying. Try to help you out. But sometimes, work of art. You know what I'm saying? It can be a little stubborn. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, you putting, you know what I'm saying, you, you know what I'm saying, putting something on some paper, you know what I'm saying, knock a draw. You know what I'm saying, you draw, sometimes that thing just don't come out the way you want to, that thing, you know what I'm saying, try to get, just get a fresh piece of paper. How you think God is? Nah, I hadn't, you know what I'm saying, nah, he didn't work out, we'll get the next one. You know what I mean, kings we had? You know what I mean, kings we had to go through until we got to Yahweh Shua? Nah, he didn't work out next. That's the most I got, he just drawing, just that, nothing. Mm-hmm. nah, next. Now I used to do it. You know what I'm saying? I used to write. You know what I'm saying? I used to write and said another. Be like, that's just not what I'm looking for. Delete. We made after his image. What do you think he's doing? We've seen his track record. We know how he does things. We've seen him deal with people. Why do we keep playing with the man? Why do we keep pretending like the man ain't saying what he's saying? Like we don't know. Ignoring the obvious. You look around this world and you see it happening. You got earthquakes going on everywhere. Everywhere you got earthquakes. And I don't mean it's the end of the world. Grab a... What do I want? Matthew 24. Matthew 24. That's exactly what I want. Or was it Luke? Let's do Matthew 24. Let's just go with it. You right. Matthew chapter 24. Give me verse, uh, give me Matthew chapter 24, give me verse 5. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. You look around, you see all this stuff happening, earthquakes. You see, you go to Hawaii, you got a darn volcano blowing up, splitting the darn island. I read an article, it said, it said in a matter of hours, it dried up the biggest lake in Hawaii. In a matter of hours, that thing swallowed up a whole lake. And these people look at this stuff and be like, okay, look at nature. Yeah, okay, you keep looking at nature. Most high God talking. The whole book tell you that the man, it took, what is that, Isaiah? I think Isaiah tell you the earth got to prepare itself. Because one day, the mountains are going to melt at his coming. I don't know what mountains melting could look like. Out of nowhere in Guatemala, they had another volcano just erupted out of nowhere. They got video of these people rushing down mountains because you see them just followed by smoke. And they're coming all the way out. And we, we, we feel like we got time to play with the man? That's crazy. This, this is uh, Matthew chapter 24. Give me verse 7. I said 5, but give me 7. For nation shall rise against nation, okay, and kingdom against kingdom, uh huh, and there shall be famines, uh huh, pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes in diverse places? You know what happened right before a volcano erupt? Earthquake. Before and after. Before and after. That's what earthquakes are. Earthquakes. You know what I'm saying? You got pressure underneath the ground. You know what I'm saying? Pressure is underneath the ground, causing stuff to shift. All right, the only reason you got pressure because you got magma under the ground, what they call magma. That's the lava, you know what I'm saying? When it's under the ground, they call it magma. You know what I'm saying? You got that thing under the ground, you know what I'm saying? It's boiling. You get a little, I mean, you, you, if, if you take some hot fire, right? Some hot fire and then put some, hot fire. It's, and then put some, you know what I'm saying? Because you can have a, you have a little cool fire. Hey, it's different when you, you turn that thing on low on your stove. You know what I'm saying? And you just bring your food to a simmer. But then you turn that thing all the way up. You know what I'm saying? That water going to start to boil. Now, what's going to happen? You put a top on that water. That thing going to steam, right? And you know what all your tops got? They all got like a little hole in them. You know why? Steam got to release. Because if you cover that hole, then that thing going to start shaking like this. You ever had a pot or put a plate over a pot? And I think it starts to... That's an earthquake. 
So the same thing is going on under it. You got fire and then you also got water underneath the earth. So that thing is creating gases and pressure and all this stuff. That thing starts to shake the darn earth up. Well, it, as it shakes, the pressure is getting higher and higher. That means the lava is getting higher and higher. Then all of a sudden, that thing starts coming out the top of the darn mountains. Whole mountains start melting. You know what the earth is doing? Preparing itself for it's coming. That's why he said it's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. Right? What did he say next? This, this, let me tell you, when y'all start seeing all these earthquakes, you know what's about to happen? The end of the world. Watch this. Watch how the Bible say what I just said. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Yeah. This is just the beginning. Don't let these people tell you, oh, it's a bunch of earthquake, the world about to end. No, it's just the beginning. We just getting started. At the book time, tell you, we just getting started. It ain't the end. It's the beginning of where it gets start getting rough for people. When we gonna stop playing? When we gonna look around and be like, all right, for sure, now it's time to start living right. Now it's time for me to stop smoking, stop drinking, getting drunk every darn night, every darn weekend. I appreciate the most I got putting it on our mind to have this thing on, on Friday. Friday night. It, it put people in the choice. They gotta choose. You gotta choose. I mean, I can go out. I gotta be getting ready around this time. You gotta choose. We not some people here that was still in the life. They came for a couple weekends. After that, we see them on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, seeing their pictures on Friday night. Because they know they had to chew. They are like, uh, this thing kind of tight here. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you don't feel like you can do both. That thing make me a little, uh, you can here and sit in, you sit in here every week and then, you know what I'm saying, you leave and do the same thing you always been doing. That thing make me feel like something ain't effective. You know what I mean? Something not effective. You know what I'm saying? I'm okay with you coming in a couple times. And your, your butt don't come back for a month or two. Now I, I get it. It's like, uh, I think, like you want it, but it's touching you, and you can't just sit here. You know what I'm saying? That thing made me feel good. I like that. I don't care if there's nobody in here. That thing don't bother me. What it bothers me is if it's packed out, and everybody's still doing the same thing they always been doing. Now that bothers me. That made me feel uncomfortable. That made me feel like I ain't nothing no different than one of these liars. I want to be power, and sometimes power will push your butt back. Power will get your butt up out of here. Right? That thing got to show power. Let's see what we're talking about. Let's get back over to, uh, uh, where were we at? We was at Ephesians. Grab Deuteronomy chapter 10 for me. 10? Mm-hmm. We left off on 9. We ain't got to read all of 9. Grab Deuteronomy chapter 10 for me. Is that your boy crying? What's wrong with him? <laughs> It's Deuteronomy chapter 10. Give me uh, verse uh, 17, maybe. Give me verse 12. It's Deuteronomy chapter 10. Give me verse 11. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, mm -hmm. that they may go in and possess the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. Yeah, he said, go ahead and rise up. Go ahead and take your journey amongst the people. Hey, I want to go ahead and give them the land that I swore on to their fathers. I told their father they're going to get some land. I want to go ahead and give it to them. Right? The whole point of, the, the whole point of what we are doing, it wasn't for our righteousness. It wasn't, because, it wasn't because we got up and we was like, you know what? In Egypt, we handled ourselves so appropriately that the Most High God said he owes us something. That's crazy. It ain't had nothing to do with us. We were running our darn mouth when we was in Egypt. Then we start crying out to the Most High God. We said, God, hear us. Save us from this bondage. We were slaves in Egypt. Just like we are slaves here. We cried out, and then we went into the wilderness. Right? Most High God brought us into the wilderness. And guess what? Did we straighten up in the wilderness? Heck no. We made a darn mess there, too. Most High God was trying to show us something special. Trying to show us that we could depend on the man. Right? That he would do it. He would provide everything for us. And you know what we did? We complained and we were looking like, man, at least when we was in Egypt. What y'all think this book is here for? The book is here so we can learn. Grab, uh, grab before we get to Deuteronomy, grab Romans 15. Give me verse 4. This is Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It 
this Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. All right? So when it was written, everything that we reading, it was written for our learning that we can learn from it. We went into the wilderness to start running our mouth, even though we hated Egypt. Egypt was tearing us down. We complained about Egypt. When it came time to leave, and God took us through some rough times, our whole thing was at least in Egypt. You don't think we're going to be the same way with America? We run all this. They shoot our kids down. My wife would tell me she, she, she heard or saw about a video where they, they arrested a, well, a 10-year-old, a little 10-year-old boy, put him in handcuffs, and set the boy there until he peed on his darn self. These are sick people, and we know they sick. We know they sick. The most I got put them in place to be absolute sickos. Absolute lunatics. I watched a video of a, a police officer. He, uh, old white police officer, had this, had a, you know what I'm saying, one of our Hebrew boys on the ground and just UFC ground and pounding them, bro. Just boom, 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 knocking him out. Two of them. The other cop felt uncomfortable, but you know, these sorry cops, they won't stand and step in front of them and be like, you need to relax. These sorry cops that just stand by and they hide behind the badge. And then want us to say, not all of them are bad. Not all of them are darn good. Let me talk about the ones that's bad then. Ain't nobody good enough to stop them? Y'all know he wrong. We got friends of police officers that won't speak on it. Because they get us in here and it's a trap. They get us in and they know we need a livelihood. They know we need something. So they bring us in and we're here. We'll go, we'll go to the academy. And we'll hear them talking this racist stuff right in our ear just spitting on us. But you know what? We under so much pressure we feel like we got to sit there and take that. I still got to stay with the force. I still got to join in and I got to conform. You know why? Because it's my livelihood. I got to provide for my kids. What am I going to do? I'm going to expose this and be out of a job, and it's probably still not going to change nothing. I'm just going to be another black person out of a job, or am I just going to roll with it and, you know, hopefully one day I can change something once I have enough power. So you keep putting it in your mind, be like, one day I will. I mean, I'm just going to take it right now, but later on, maybe I'll make chief and then I'll change it. The whole time, they just tagging more weights onto you. Then you end up getting up there, and you know what? You got too much weight to change. You owe too many people favors to do anything different. They got too much dirt on you to make you, to make you, put you in position where you can't tell on nobody. You can't say nothing. That's how I did it. That's what people excused about Obama was. You know what I'm saying? You get there and you play that game, play that game, and then you, and I believe, there probably was a part of him that really wanted to do some stuff. But you play that game, you do some favors, get there, you know what I'm saying? You get all the way up there, they got you so tied up, what you gonna do? You gotta keep playing the darn game. Then you gotta, you gotta play the long game. Okay, well maybe after I'm president, I'll do something. And they still got favors. You still got to open up foundations and do Netflix deals and all this stuff because they still got, you still got to do some work. That thing going to stop. You don't think these people, these people set this whole thing up with you not in mind and you don't think they got this thing figured out by the time you get there? This whole, this whole country was set up with us being slaves. You don't think it by now, 400 years later, you don't think they figured out, okay, if they get to this point, this is how we can control them. You can tell the ones they can't control. Get their butt up out of here. Kaepernick. You get your butt up out of here. What's wrong with you? Bill Cosby. Get y'all butts up <laughs> out of here. Yeah, Bill Cosby ought to be ashamed of himself. You saw him on that video? I ain't never seen nobody with blind with the, that good a reflex. You know he heard the woman walk on. Never seen him. He ought to be ashamed of himself. Right, but you look at all you look at all this stuff, and this is how they this is how they condition us to think that we can make excuses for them. We ain't got no excuses. We gotta be willing to die for what we're talking about, and it gotta be righteous. Reason, half the time, reason why these people won't die for what they talking about because they ain't righteous. They don't believe, really believe it. They just doing something. You know what I'm saying? They call that thing uh, co- what they call, what they call it uh, uh, couture, couture activism. 
You know what I'm saying? You put on some lipstick and do your hair and get in front of a camera holding up a sign. Right? Get you a fresh little haircut. Man, they ain't had that. Back in my mama, they ain't had that stuff. Back before my mama, they ain't had that stuff. You know, they wasn't out there with no darn. You know what I'm saying? Trying to look nice. They was out there trying to get something done. They was out there trying to get something done. Fighting with power. Only thing is, they, didn't just, they just didn't have the most high God behind it. Not all the way. He was behind it in the way that he wanted to be behind it. But they wasn't behind the most high God. Martin Luther King too, all of them. Right? All of them were deceived. We got an opportunity. We got some. If the most high God say, say the right thing or say the, say the same thing, we got an opportunity to change some stuff. What time has it been where you had you had people that actually had the truth? And it was being taught. Where the book was open to them. Plain. At what point, what path can you go to? You open up the book and just, I mean, just any random page in it, and that thing will make sense. And he ain't got to dance around it. This thing is special at the most high God to. It's small. This thing is special at the most high God doing. And according to the most high God purpose, that's how that thing going to move. It'd be small until you say anything different. We can't worry about size. The only thing we can worry about is consistency. That we obey the man. That we save our own souls. This is a. Uh, what did I say? Deuteronomy 10. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10. What, verse 12? Verse 11. Verse 11. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 11. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, mm -hmm. that they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. Mm -hmm. And now, Israel. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? But he to said, fear the Lord thy God. What do I require of thee? But what? But to fear the Lord thy God. Just, just fear me. That's all. Just do what I say. Just know that I'll get your darn butt if you don't do what I say. That's all I'm requiring of you. That's a big, that's a big requirement, though. You know what I'm saying? We look at it. That thing, just fear. Okay, God. That's a big requirement. You better just do everything I darn say. I think it'd be easier for you. Right? It'd work out better for you. Keep going. And to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Uh huh. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Mm -hmm. Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens is the Lord's, thy God's, the earth, and also with all that therein is. Mm -hmm. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Yep. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. And he said, no do what now? Stiff neck. Circumcise, therefore, the first foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff neck. All right. So he told you, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Right. All this is based off of grace. Right. All in the New Testament. What is it telling us to circumcise? Our heart. Our heart. We look at this, and, and a lot of people will look at John 1 where he say, Moses brought the law, but Yahushua brought grace. And we'll look at that, and we'll, we'll make the assumption because we Christians, because we don't know the book, because we never had a teacher, because we never, we never allowed the Most High God to open our eyes to the book. We always try to make assumptions and jump to conclusions. We never just self-taught. I was talking to my auntie the other day. I appreciate the Most High God. All right, talking to my auntie, she just like, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, like, what, you know what I'm saying, what, you know, how this thing play out, you know what I'm saying, how you, you know what I'm saying, how you just, how you just gotta, how you just gotta look at the book, you know what I'm saying, I told you, you just gotta erase, she was like, you know what I'm saying, I hear these pastors, and it's just, some of this stuff just don't feel like it lined up, I'm like, yeah, it don't line up all the time, she was like, you know what I'm saying, where you, where you start, where do you go, how did you do it, I just looked at the book, just read it. Right? I erased everything. I read it. You know what I you know what I did? I held myself. I said anytime I talk about the Bible, anytime I want to give advice about the Bible, anytime I want to say the Bible says something, I gotta find that exact Bible verse before I do it. Right? If I think this is what the Bible communicates, I gotta find all the Bible verses that say that to make sure it's true. I was like, you do that, you'll weed out a lot of the foolishness that you think. 
And I was like, don't force it either. Don't, don't try to make the Bible say something that you want it to say. No, no, no. Just make, make sure it say exactly what you think it say. Make sure it say And if it don't, say only what the Bible say. And just watch how quickly you'll change. Don't get to telling people, no, so even though it don't, it don't actually say this is what this really, no, no, no. Kick that stuff out. Just say, you know what? This is what it's, mm, let, me, let me just read it to you. Just go back. Let me just read it to you. This is what it say. Let me just read it to you. Don't interpret it for nobody. Just read it to them. And you take it for exactly what it say. Stop feeling like you can't look at the Bible and take it for exactly what it say. Take it exactly what it means. Take it as literal as possible. Right? Not everything in the Bible literal, but just start off that way. Everything it say, take it literally. Challenge yourself. Some of it ain't literal, but take it literally. Your first time around, look at it and take it literal. Whatever it say, that's exactly what it means. You'll see all that stuff start opening up for you. Because now, most high God can say, okay, I can trust him. I can trust him. Right? Sometimes we get too smart for God. We be looking at, oh, this is some primitive people, this, that, and other. Because we too smart. If somebody came right now, if, if, the, if an angel appear, appeared unto us right now, right? One of us said, you know what? Take your son and uh, take him to the top of the stratosphere and go ahead and throw him off. Then I'll know you love me. We look at that and we'll be like, see, God, we, you know, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go see our pastor. We're going to go see our pastor and be like, pastor. I just had a vision. God told me to go throw my baby. Now, see, the devil will come. See, even, even, even Paul told us that, you know, the devil comes appearing as an angel of light. God, would, God is a God of family. He would never want you to do that. Right? Whole time, they miss Abraham. Abraham would tell him, take him to the top of uh, Mount Moriah. Right? And then uh, go ahead and slaughter your son. Abraham didn't look at that and be like, oh, no, that's not literal. God didn't actually mean that. God actually, he was, Abraham could have been real smart and be like, oh, God is just trying to test me to know if I love God. Don't even worry about it. I really do love you. Abraham butt would have been out of there. Abraham said, you know what? That's what it say. He took it up there and the most high God, you know, ah, 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 hold on. Now I know you love me. You don't think he'll do the same for us? If we look at this book and we say something, we just take it literal. We be like, oh, what it say? And we go, you don't think the most I got if it end up, ah, 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 ah. Now I know you obey me. Just, just listen. Don't trust me because you trust me. Trust the book. Take whatever you read literally. You don't know the book yet? You new to the book? Read through that thing. Whatever it say, take it literal. I bet you you'll get a lot further than these smart Christians that be, oh, well, actually, God just really means this. I'll tell you, sometimes God is not being literal. I, that is true, right? Take it literal, though. Until you figure it out. Until you know what's literal and what's not, take it literal. Definitely got a literal message. Definitely got a literal message. Every time they're going to have a literal message, right? But some of the stuff is parables, right? Some of the stuff, he you know what I'm saying? Some of the stuff it just say, you know what I'm saying? It say put frontlets on your heads. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you ain't sitting there if you ain't got no darn box on the front of your head like these stupid Jewish people walking around with darn boxes on the front of their darn head. But they took it literal. Right? Now they hypocrites and everything darn else. So if we even looked at that and we said, you know what? I'm going to take it literal, put a box on the front of my head, and I kept that consistent with everything else. You know, then the most I got to look at you and be like, you know what? That's a man after my own darn heart. He looked at my, he honored my words so much, he ain't taking a chance to be wrong. What do you think he's looking for? He's just looking for somebody... Somebody that will step up and say, you know what? I'm tired of compromising. I'm tired of tinkering around the edges. That's what we do. We learn about God and we say, okay, this is a sin. Let me get as close to that sin as possible without doing it. Knowing your butt going to darn slip. It's about time where we got to line up. Otherwise, most of God, every all this stuff is on the clock for us. It's on the darn clock. He's looking like, mm-hmm. Grab uh, Romans chapter 2. Y'all don't think it's on the clock. They don't be believing you, boy. You know what I'm saying? You talk, you talk to them, matter. You try to tell them, we on the clock. They don't be believing you. They don't be believing me. That's all right, though. They'll believe the book. Either now or later. Either now or later. 
We got to line up early, too. Yeah, it's Romans chapter 2. I'm on verse 1. It's Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Ain't nothing to drink in there, Maddie? No, that ain't gone. Good gracious. Ain't even just like a, I mean, a little lemonade. Ain't nothing in there? That's going to make you feel worse. Nah, I'll be all right. <laughs> Me and lemonade, you know what I'm saying? We got like a chemical, you know what I'm saying? Like synergy that goes on, you know what I'm saying? It's just me and lemonade get along real nice. No, me and milk are enemies. Uh-huh. I get along with all my milk. Milk's disgusting. This is Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Watch what the book say. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, old man. He said, therefore, thou art inexcusable, old man. Why? Whosoever thou art that judges. Uh-huh. For wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. Watch this. For you that judge does the same thing. Okay. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Mm -hmm. And do you think this, O oh man, that you judge them which do such things and you do the same, that you shall escape the judgment of God? Uh huh. Or despise thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Right? The grace of God, that's trying to lead you to repentance. Watch this. But after your hardness and impenitent heart, Treasurest up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. In other words, all this sinning that you're doing when God is trying to be good to you, when God keep on giving you chances, all this sinning that you're doing, all you're doing is building up wrath for the day of wrath. In other words, you on a time clock. Whole time, most high God is looking at you like, all right, that thing just getting worse for you. That rap sheet getting long. Right? That thing just getting, that's how a prosecutor is, just like a rap sheet. That's how a prosecutor is. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be watching these, these first 48 shows and all this. You think as soon as they see him do one crime, they go out and get him? No, they build a darn case. They said, no, I want you and I want him. So we're going to let him keep doing his thing and we're just going to get it all on camera. Keep watching. Keep watching. Then we build a whole enterprise. Then, matter of fact, we're going to grab one person and make him tell on all them. We're going to you, you, let you operate. We just surveil it. We standing back. We covert. We watching the whole thing. Let you continue to operate. Then they come in, shut everything down. And guess what? When that happens, if they do their job right, the drug dealer, the criminal, whatever they are, they ain't going to know what happened. They ain't going to know. They ain't even going to see it coming. It's a, a normal day for them. And then all of a sudden, your butt in jail. Right? Normal day. And your butt darn in jail. That easy, that quick. All right? Same thing, police, even with smaller infractions. All right? A lot of times, these police, they roll up on you. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know they butt would have been watching you the whole time. You, you driving, you just darn speeding. You have a cop sometimes pull up on the side of you. All right? Just look at you. Sometimes they let you go, they pull up on the side of you, slow down, and then keep going. Whole time, he been watching your butt speed. He could have pulled your darn butt over. Even when they do pull you over. They've been watching you speed for a minute. You just ain't paying the darn attention. They've been right behind you. Then they, they flash the lights. You feel like, oh, where'd they come from? They've been sitting there watching you. Cops, what they do is if you got a couple cars, they'll, they'll go behind one car, right? And you like a car or two in front of them. They'll go behind that one car, and they can see you, but it's tough for you to see them looking out your back. Because you got to look out the rear view to see them. They can just look straight ahead. You know what I'm saying? And they see you just doing all the stuff, swerving, doing all that stuff. Then they just jump off from behind that car, flick their lights on. They've been watching your butt the whole time. How you think God did? Once that happened, it's over. Once you see them lights, your whole heart drop. There ain't nothing else you could do. It ain't like it ain't like you could slam on the brakes and stop it. He's already seen you. You got the cop to sit on the side. You know what I'm saying? On the motorcycle. I hate that. Them the worst one. <laughs> sit on the side on the motorcycle. Got the gun. You shooting across that darn corner. You hit that corner. Gun got your butt. Bop. What you going to do? You can slow down as much as you want. That thing already clocks you. You done. It's over already. That's how it is with the most high God. We sitting here and we living our life. We think we getting away with something, doing something. Then one moment, boom, that thing done. It's over. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You already clocked. Soul is required of you. 
that thing is done already. You can't do nothing about it. Whatever, up to that point, whatever happened is what you got to live with or die with. This is an effort for all of us to change, to be different, and stick with that for the rest of our life. Otherwise, Most High God just going to make a fool out of us. Go ahead. It's Romans chapter 2, what, verse 6, verse 5? This is Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Uh-huh. To according them. to what you do is how the Most High God going to render to you. If you live like a darn sinner, then that's what he going to render to you. Don't get these people tell you, tell you it don't matter what you do. That's a lie. That's how these people set us up. We know the truth. Just live in it. Keep going. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Mm -hmm. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath. Mm -hmm. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Mm -hmm. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good to the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Mm -hmm. In for both cases, Jew come first, then the Gentile. Right, keep going. That's important too. We'll talk about it some other time. For there is no respect of persons with God. Mm -hmm. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. Mm -hmm. As many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Mm -hmm. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. All right, don't sit here and feel like feel like you know what I'm saying. You come, you hear a little bit of word, or you know more than a lot of other people, or anything like that. That. That justify you? Most I got ain't thinking about how much you darn know. Trying to think about how much you do. All right? Keep going. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Uh huh. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the main the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Uh -huh. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Yahushua the Messiah according to my gospel. I appreciate that. He said according to what? My gospel. Man, you better stop letting these people back you off of the truth. You know what I'm saying? Let these people back you. Paul ain't back off of this stuff. He stood on top of that thing. He said this is my gospel. You say something like that today, people, but that's self-right. That's God's gospel. Paul knew what he was talking about, but it's my gospel. Why? Because most High God gave it to him to preach. Yeah, he sent him. All right? It ain't like one of these preachers now. Don't get that wrong. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like I can stand up and be like, this is my gospel. Most High God ain't directly give it to me. All right? He gave it to Paul, and I learned it from him. All right? He said, it's my gospel. What you talking about? Keep going. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and re rest is in the law. And make thy boast of God, and know his will, and approve the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Mm -hmm. And are confident that you yourself are a guide of the blind, mm -hmm. a light of them which are in darkness. Mm -hmm. An instructor to the foolish, a teacher of babies, mm -hmm. which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore which teaches another... Teaches thou not thyself? Mm -hmm. Thou that preaches a man should not steal, do you steal? Mm -hmm. Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Mm -hmm. You that hate idols, do you commit sacrilege? Mm -hmm. You that make your boast of the law through breaking the law dishonor God. Mm -hmm. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Right? That's how it works. That's, that's how we end up getting here. Right? That's why nobody that's why these people don't trust I was talking to I was talking to a gentleman, he uh he watched one of the videos online and so he gave me a call. And his whole thing was he was like, Man, do you have any evidence that Yahushua even existed? Right? Just like I mean, what evidence do you have? I said, Well, yeah, I mean I got plenty of evidence. You know what I'm saying? I got plenty of evidence. So I started laying on it, I started laying all this stuff on it. I was like, Okay, Yahushua was around, you know what I'm saying? You got uh, maybe, you know what I'm saying, 40, you know what I'm saying, 30 B.C., you know what I'm saying, according to these people time. You know what I'm saying, 30, 40 B.C., somewhere around there, right? So I was like, that's when Yahushua was around. So I was like, let's do the math. You got maybe 100 years later, you got this historian that talks about him. Maybe 70 years later, you got this historian that talks about him. 
to all these people that you know were have that were close or in the lifetime of living while Yahushua was li alive. They talked about him and they talked about him like he was a man. They didn't talk about him like all oh, these people following some myth. And they was right there in the thick of things. Surely they would know. Surely they would have heard a rumor or something like, oh, no, he never even existed. But they talking about him like, oh, yeah, that man, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. And they they not talking about him favorably. They're not saying like, oh, yeah, we love Yahushua. they saying all these people that follow that crazy man are idiots. That's pretty much how they talking. All right? They're like, oh, these, these, these Christians, they follow this religion. All right? This, this, they follow this religion. The Jews, they follow this religion. Right? And they talk about them, talk bad about them. But guess what they never said? That Yahushua was made up. They never said Jesus was fake. So now, you remove yourself 2,000 years, and all of a sudden, you got some wise and smart people that all of a sudden know that he's fake. But the people living in his time didn't know that. You experienced that at work. At my job, even me, right? I came in, and I had two supervisors, you know what I'm saying? I was a team lead, you know what I'm saying? My, my supervisors, you know what I'm saying? One was, you know, out, and then the other one quit. So I got thrusted in there, and I was the only person there. I only been, only been at my job for about a little over, a little over six months at that point. Well, no, probably, probably almost a year at that point. I've been at that job almost a year. I ain't got no darn history. I ain't got no knowledge. I don't know how things work. But I'm thrusted out in the supervisor's position to make decisions. Nobody really over me to tell me what's right or wrong. Everybody knew. So you know what I did? I started making darn decisions. I was like, mm, why we do that? That don't make sense. Why we do that? That don't make sense. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's stop doing that. You know it take two years for me to find out some of them decisions I made? Ooh, I shouldn't have did that. Shouldn't have did that. Because now I got to deal with this on the back end as a result. When I stopped that process, that process was actually in place to stop this thing that I didn't even know was happening. So you got all these things. Because I'm new on the scene, I don't have history. I'm just making darn decisions based off of what I see. Same thing that people do now. They come new on the scene. They, talk, they looking back 2,000 years talking about what did and didn't happen. What is and is not real without actually taking in the information and figuring out why are people saying the things that they say. They just go back and say, eh, I don't like that. I'll get it out of here. Same thing I did. You can make that mistake when you remove from the actual history. We got the history. Look at the history. Look at history on it. Look at history on Yahushua and see what it say. You will see people talk about the man. And they're not talking like he's fake. They're not talking about you. I just want somebody to find me an ancient historical reference to Yahushua that insinuates in any way that he didn't exist. Go ahead and send it to me. I'll take it. I'm not saying it. I ain't, I ain't saying it even ain't out there. I'm saying I ain't seen it. Go ahead and send it to me. Send, send me an authentic, ancient reference that talks about Yahushua as if he didn't exist. And then we can do some talking from there. Yeah, I can show you a whole bunch. Even if you can show me one, I can show you about six, seven, eight that tell you the man did exist. And it coming from his enemies. You let these people make a fool out of you if you want to. You know the Muslims like attest to him being real. They just don't think he was. Muslims attest to him. The uh, the uh, fake Jews attest to him. The ancient real Jews attest to him. You know what I'm saying? The Christians attest to him. You know what I'm saying? All the other religions speak of the man as if he is real. Hinduism. Speak of the man as if you're like the people in who into Hinduism that comment on him. You know what I'm saying? They speak of the man as if he real. Buddhism. People in Buddhism that comment on him. They speak of the man. Ancient people. They speak on the speak on the man as if he real. Nobody looked at him and be like, ah, oh, nah, he ain't even real. These people know that people ain't. This a man. You know how ridiculous that sound. You know Japanese people got a bunch of crosses on their graves. You know that they decided to divide time by him. Yeah. Before AD. Christ and A.D. Yeah. Off a of fake man? The whole world, like, do the B.C. and A.D. You, okay, so you got, you now got. They say before a common era, but, you know, that's new. That's new. Yeah. You got, you got whole nations, right? Usually ancient nation, I'm a king, I want a currency, what am I going to do? 
You know what I'm saying? I want some money. What am I going to do? I'm a king. I want to design my own money. What would I do, Maddie? Put your face on it. I'm going to put my face on my money. I'm going to give me a little coin, and I'm going to put my nice little picture on it, and I'm going to be nice, right? A king puts his own picture on his money. You got nations that put Yao Shu on their money. When have you ever seen a fake man? Bet you ain't nobody gonna come back and say George Washington fake. I did too. It deep was fake. You know what, Maddie? You might be on the darn something. George Washington fake. Let's just go with that thing. <laughs> what the kid do? Hashtag, hashtag George Washington fake. You know what I'm talking about? We might as well. How you gonna say our guy fake? You know what I'm saying? And our Messiah fake, and then they get to keep theirs. I ain't never seen them. Yeah. What's his kid's name? Where they at now? I don't know. Maybe he was fake, Maddie. Might be some wise word coming from him. Keep going. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. For, cir for, circumcis for circumcision verily profited if you keep the law. He says circumcision, it'll profit you if you do what? Keep the law. Okay. What else? But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Okay. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. Okay. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, it, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. So you got a circumcision and you break the law. He said by doing that, you might as well be uncircumcised. And then the people that are uncircumcised that keep the law are going to mess around and judge you. Keep going. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. He, he said he is not a Jew. Which is one outwardly, Neither but is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh? Uh huh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not of the letter, mm -hmm. whose praise is not of men but of God. Okay. What advantage then has the Jew? He said, "What advantage then has the Jew?" Keep going. He said, "What advantage then has the Jew?" Or what profit is there of circumcision? Mm hmm. Much every way. <coughs> Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Most High God gave us the word. Right? That's the most important reason. He gave us the word. Right? He said circumc circumcision is not in. I mean outwardly. It's inwardly. That's the exact same thing that we just read in Deuteronomy. When he told us, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. When we look at this Old Testament, we look at the when we look at the book. Stop letting these people make you feel like God changed. He didn't change. We're looking at the same thing. When John is talking about Moses brought the law and Yahushua brought grace, right? Don't get to thinking that there's no grace in the law. He's talking about something larger. The law was in place to identify sin and punish it. Period. The law itself didn't open up an opportunity for grace. But God always had grace. That's what it is. That's what grace is. The law is sitting there. It's going to punish you. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off on that punishment. And hopefully you get it right in time. We've seen that plenty of time in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? You see, you see uh, Aaron, you know what I'm saying, fresh... Fresh off of Mount Sinai. Our high priest Aaron made us golden calves. Everybody else got God, not Aaron. That's grace. All right? There's plenty of examples of that all through the book, and we're going to continue to read these examples. Some stuff get punished. Some stuff the most I got to hold off on. But in all of it is grace. That's what it's talking about. It ain't saying that there's no grace that that that. That was in Moses' time. It's telling us 
that the law itself was designated to identify sin. Yahushua gave us a way to be cleansed of that sin. Therefore, the law was came by Moses. Yahushua brought grace. Grab um, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Twenty-two. Deuteronomy chapter eleven, verse twenty-two. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to cleave unto Him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Mm -hmm. Every place whereupon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from mm -hmm. the wilderness and Lebanon from the river to the river Euphrates even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be mm -hmm. there shall no man be able to stand before you for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he has said unto you mm -hmm. behold I set before you this day a blessing and a curse he said I set before you this day a blessing and then I also set before you a curse a blessing if ye obey if you obey of the Lord your God, which I shall command you this day. He said, if you obey, that thing going to be a blessing. But. And a curse, if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods, which ye have not known. If you don't obey, a curse. That's how the Most High God got this whole thing set up. You can try to make it deeper than that. You could try to, you know what I'm saying, tell you let these people tell you all these lies. It's not deep. It's very clear. Do what the man say or don't do what he say. It ain't no, well, I do most of it. Sometimes I do it, but nobody can do it all the way. Lies. Do what the man say 100% or don't do what he say 100%. That could be doing what he say 99.99%. You're going to hell. <laughs> you do what he say 100% or don't do what he say at any percentage. Your butt going to darn hell. Gift and curse. That's how he lined it up for us. That makes it simple. And make it tight. All right? And make it where you're like, uh, I don't know. That's all right, though. At least you got the information. You can make a decision at that point. Like, I, I can't do it, so I'm just going to live how I want to live. That's fine for you. You do what you want to do. What I'm saying is, have the information, make that darn, darn choice, and know what's going to come after it. Your butt going to darn hell. Be sure of it. And just be okay with it and keep moving. Don't just get to convincing yourself you're not going to go to hell, though. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. You might as well, you know what I'm saying, give yourself a fair shot. At least if you if you settle in your mind, okay, I know I'm going right to hell if I do this, perhaps you'll be like, yeah, right, let me just do the right thing. You get to tricking yourself, you know what I'm saying, like, um, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I ain't going to let myself believe that's going to happen. But now you just tricked yourself. You ain't, even, you ain't giving yourself enough tools to make a correct decision, make a wise decision. All right, you disarmed yourself. All right, we can't have that. Let's end off. Let's go to uh, uh, Romans 11. We can get up out of here. It's Romans 11, chapter 18. Romans chapter 11, verse 18, I mean. It's Romans chapter 11, verse 18. not against the branches but if thou boast thou bo thou bearest not thy the root but the root but the root thee thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in well because of unbelief they were broken off and mm -hmm. thou standest by faith be not high minded but fear for if God spare the natural branches take heed lest he also spare not thee beheld therefore the goodness and the severity of God on them which fail severity but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. He said, this is the New Testament, and he said before you the same thing. Blessings and curses. He said, be mindful of the goodness, but also the severity of God. 
right? Severity for those who don't obey what he's saying. But for y'all, goodness, that is, if you continue to obey. If not, you see that condition, if not, you can't be 99.99%. If that thing stop, your butt can get it too, just like everybody else. Right? That has to be our mindset. We have to settle that thought in our head. If we not right, we on our way straight to darn hell. Right? There's no grace that's going to save us, none of that. If you're not living right, no grace is going to save you. Grace is there in order to get you to repentance, get you to living right. That's what allows you, hey, 20 years of my life, I lived like a darn scoundrel. Okay, at 21, I decided to change. Some people, 30 years of their life, they live like a darn scoundrel. At 31, I decided to change. For the rest of my life at that point, I live right. Grace says, okay, you made it to 31. I forget all that behind there. Right? I'm going to forgive all that. Everything going forward, that's you. You live blameless for the rest of your life. Most of our God say, I count you as blameless. Even though you sin for the first 30, he says, rest of your life, you live blameless. First 30, it don't even matter. I count you as blameless. All right? That's grace. But that doesn't work. That grace can't take effect if first 30 years of your life, you live like a scoundrel. Then for about two years, you live righteous. And then after that, you start living like a scoundrel again or a kind of scoundrel. I mean, almost righteous. Nah, no grace taking effect. All right? The day you die, that's over. The Most High God is here and giving us grace to get us to a point where we completely turn from sin. The longer it takes us to do that, you know what I'm saying? The more, the more gamble we putting on our own lives. At any moment, you could just clock it and just say, okay, we caught your butt speed. You done. That got that. All right? Any questions? Let's pray out.